Hi everyone, and welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction. If you like what I'm doing, in addition to subscribing and liking and commenting on these videos, please consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. The link is in the description right below, and um, it helps support me as I continue pursuing my main career of opera. Uh, now that I'm living in the city, I have my own studio apartment, a lot more expensive than living in the country with the parents. So. Um, scraping money together where I can, and the Patreon is a, a huge help in these times. So check that out if you like what I'm doing. Without further ado, we are going to jump into Jeff Castellucci's The Bare Necessities, bass singer cover. Uh, it's funny, he's named some of these other ones aptly so. Low bass singer cover, which I would certainly throw this in that category as well. But Bare Necessities, bass singer cover, Jeff Castellucci, Jungle Book, one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. There's some fantastic music from there. This is one of the most iconic Disney songs ever made. And uh, I remember watching the premiere of this when it came out. Absolutely loved it. <clears throat> I think this was Jeff's first solo uh, cover that he did. And it was a great choice. I remember really enjoying it. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what Jeff does with this iconic Disney song. So he, man, what a great intro, you know, something that's not in the original. This is something Jeff created and added uh, added his own big twist on it, which if you guys know I really respect when you do an arrangement of something. It's very barbershoppy, also not like the original. And I mean, the rest of the cover, as far as I remember, and I, I think he adheres to it pretty closely, is, is not barbershoppy. But I think the barbershop really, those harmonies really lead in nicely. What's he... So he's in C, uh, I guess C major, yeah, C major. And he got down pretty low there in chest in, in that intro there, I don't know. I did he get down to a G? He might have gotten down to a G in chest. Um, I think he does do that later in a, in a clear way. I can't remember all the chords he was hitting throughout that intro, but we're in C major, so I think we're gonna get a lot of C2s. And uh, we will see what else does with it, but I love, love that intro. I think the barbershop works really nicely, and I think it's going to... Barbershop has that really positive kind of vibe to it, and this piece totally is... It's a very positive, feel-good, fun kind of piece, and so I think that's one reason why the barbershop works and why it's going to transition well into this section when Jeff's about to pick up the tempo and sing, you know, the version that we're used to, but he's, of course, going to do it much lower. Necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. Well, I mean the bare necessities, old Mother Nature's recipes that bring the bare necessities of life. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, I couldn't be fonder of my big home. The bees are buzzing in the trees to make some honey just for me. When you look under the rocks and the plants and you take a glance at the fancy ants and then maybe try a few, well, the bare necessities of life will come to you. <laughs> this is great. So Jeff's singing up. You know, he's called himself a baritone before. I do not subscribe to that as someone who analyzes voices and voice types all the time. I definitely think Jeff is a bass, but he's also comfortable singing lighter up in the baritone range, which is kind of what he's doing now. So he's not he's not putting on this big bassy thing. He's singing. He's just singing comfortably in his really in his mid range right here, keeping it light, keeping it uh, keeping it flowing. 
and keeping it effortless, which is really important for this song. This is supposed to be like, you can just throw this out there, you can sing it, it's not a big to-do, it's just a song that you sing. You know, it's not a crazy, he turns it into a song with crazy range, but it's not a song originally with crazy range. Um, and, I, and I like that, and I also think it, it presents contrast, buzzword, for later, I remember he does the whole solo an octave down, which becomes an extremely low bass solo. And so singing it up where he is now gives it that contrast, gives it that place to go. If he sings the whole piece down in the basement, sure, it's cool and it's impressive, but this makes for a much more interesting development in the music. So he does that well. Also, there's no other voices going on. This, so I, I, I you know, uh, like... Some of his more recent ones, like 16 Tons and Far Over the Misty Mountains, the whole time there's more than one voice. There's not, But this one is just, he always start off with the barbershop harmonies with six voices or however many. He chose six frames for it. But uh, this is just him with instrumentation singing. So it's just a solo voice with instrumentation. So if you had just seen that clip, you wouldn't even know he's like an acapella guy. You're just like, oh, he's a bass singer singing this song with, you know, instrumentation. Um, but that was great. Really, really nice first section. Jeff sounds really good on this. I like hearing him sing casually and easily, uh, like he is here. He has a, he really, he really does have a lovely, lovely voice. Let's back it up just a bit. Oh, and he, I, lo I do, you guys saw me do the face. He does do that little dip down into like, I don't know what he got down to, but he does that little, he's like, he's just like a little tease, you know? He's like, don't, you guys, you guys know, you guys know. The, the low chestnuts are coming. Well, the bare necessities of life will come to you. They will come to you. Look for the... We're going to get a lot of C2s here. Bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strength. I mean the bare necessities, oh mother nature's recipe. pick a paw paw or a prickly pear and you prick a raw paw well next time beware next time you don't pick the prickly pear by the paw when you pick a pear try to use the claw but you don't need to use the claw when you pick a pair of the big paw paw have i given you a clue the bare necessities of life will come to you <laughs> that's so good I love that. So now he does, you know, he does these poetry readings too, where he just speaks in like his, basically his lowest relaxed speaking voice. Not, not forcing anything, but like where his speaking voice sits when it's just very relaxed. Not morning voice or anything. I mean, maybe, who knows when he records this thing. I know the super, the super low stuff, all of us acapella cover people or, you know, bass singer covers sing our lowest stuff in the morning. But like that section, who knows? Um, I like that little four part breakdown he did. Um, you know, nothing complicated, but just a nice addition to this song. Something you obviously, we obviously don't get in the original. But I also, he's also thrown on a little southern twang. When you pick a raw, Paul, well, next time, beware. And uh, I, I don't think I've heard Jeff do any kind of southern twang before. So that was, um, that was new and fresh and, and fun to hear him do that. Um, so that's just a great section, and, and man, does that does that speaky section really sound great and just work really nicely in the low bass voice? I mean, you 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 can't get a better example of that. And you know, I really haven't heard people do covers of this song, um, so I, I I got it's a jumping subjects here, but a lot of respect for Jeff for taking this on and and um, and doing something that I haven't heard people do much of before, especially not uh, basses or low basses. Although it does fit the bass voice quite well, as we can see. Um, so props to Jeff, as always. He really is one of my favorite uh, acapella producers out there. I think he's crazy creative and musically gifted, obviously a strong singer. Um, he's great. Jeff is great. That's, there's a reason he's doing so well in this uh, especially this uh, this virtual landscape that's gotten so big over the last 18 months because of COVID. Let's go back and then we'll get into this transition here. See what is coming next. Blue. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They will come to you. Look for the bare 
necessities, the necessities, forget them about. A1. Out of your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities. That's why I'm bare can rest at ease. We're just the bare necessities of life. Wherever I'm. So there's a low G. Oh. So. I, so I really, really like how it sounds when he when he keeps it nice and relaxed. But at some point, I mean, you do have to push a little for the extremes if they're not right in your wheelhouse. And so we do hear that a bit towards the very bottom of Jeff's range here in this little solo. And you can hear just towards the end where there's there's obviously editing, editing throughout in any kind of professional level production. You have a lot of editing. You have tuning. You have blending. You have panning. You have compression. You have EQing. You can run through the, the, the chain, the, the vocal chain, all these other chains that you use in production with that everyone uses. No one in this world, this virtual acapella world or live acapella world is, is just singing raw into their mic and then doing it like that. There's, there's a lot of editing and polishing that goes into it. Um, the editing I'm talking about that become that steps beyond that is just towards the end here. You can tell the the line where he went down to the G1 was not connected, so that was a line where he had to, in some way, chop it up or what's called punching it in. When you just set like one measure that you can do, and it it fills out the the line that you've already recorded. It fills out that one spot. You can hear some of that went on, which means he might have had to like reset in a way or you know fire back up for the G1, which is totally fine it's a crazy crazy low note and he gets a lot of power behind it um so it's it's totally fine it's it's not that i dislike it i'm just i'm just pointing it out that that is something that's happening in the editing process here so let's go back and hear that so you guys can just hear where you can tell it it just gets chopped it gets chopped up a little bit towards the end of that line the bare necessities that's why i'm bare can rest at ease we're just the bare necessities of life so there was one before that last line and there was a break before the g1 so there were two two pretty clear breaks where he punched in after he did however many takes it took he went back and punched in those two sections and let's see what's going on next wherever i wander So we're up to E4. So I love, uh, this is a classic thing Jeff does where he flexes one, one side of his range and then flexes the other side right after. So he just, he just did this whole solo in like outrageous low bass land. And then now he's jumped up to like, you know, high, not even really high, like bare, yeah, baritone range, up to higher end of baritone range. Um, let's see when I want to, Jeff's sweet spot, it's not quite at the as low as he went in the verse before. It's a little bit above that. But his sweet spot really is in bass range, where he where he would speak, where his speaking voice would be naturally. That's really where his sweet spot would be. That's where he could really slam notes. This is this is higher than his sweet spot. Um, clearly his voice thins out a little bit. It gets a little more breathy, which means the folds aren't coming together quite as well up there. Um so his comfort zone. This is why I. This is why I am pretty. I am confident in saying Jeff is a bass who is also comfortable singing lighter up in his up in the higher baritone range. I would not say he's a baritone who is also comfortable singing in the low bass range. And that's just my take on it. But I do feel somewhat strongly about that. I've had a lot of conversations with the guys in the Bass Singing Nation Discord group about why I feel that way. Um, but that's how I feel about Jeff's voice. I feel like he is truly a bass who is a talented singer and can navigate much higher in his range as well with comfort, as opposed to a higher voice who can also navigate lower. So that's my, that's my take on Jeff's voice. You can do with that what you will. Oh, 
don't spend your time looking around for something you want that can't be found. When you find out you can live without it and go along not thinking about it, I'll tell you something true. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They will come to you. They will come to you. Oh yeah. So what's so great about that G? <clears throat> A1, he just he totally relaxes all the way down into it. And there's very little force happening at the bottom. Um, and sliding down into it. Sliding so you can often get a little bit lower if you just slide down to a note and then cut off, but to slide down and then sustain is a different story. So I really like how he connects that whole vocal. It's almost like a Redemption's not the right word, but it's a it's a switch from what he did earlier where there was that clear vocal break before the G1. This one, he connects the voice all the way down into that G1 and then sends us off with a nice C2 at the end. So let's go back. Let's give Jeff a Pit Viper status on that slide down to the G1. And we'll call it a day. Long not thinking about it. I'll tell you something true. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They will come to you. They will come to you. You. Hey, y'all. Thanks for watching Bare Necessities. Hey, man. This is my favorite song from The Jungle Book. Yeah, and buddy. I hope you enjoyed it, too. We did. A uh, huge shout out to Native Instruments for making such an amazing guitar plug-in. Oh, wow. That was a guitar plug-in? That sounded... Extremely real. Um, yeah, shouts to Native Instruments. They they also made this um, this uh, synth designer called Massive that I used to use when I produced all my electronic music. Crazy complex. My mom looked at it one time. She said it looked like the mothership to the Starship Enterprise, or the motherboard to the Starship Enterprise. Very complicated. It were literally infinite combinations of synth design. Okay, that's beside the point. That was amazing. I really, really like this cover. Um, I think he does a great balance of featuring high voice and low voice solo. He starts off in the middle, then goes low, then goes high. He has moments that he comes in with harmony. In the beginning, we had a much more barbershop style uh, harmony, harmonic structure. And then we had a little breakdown, a few breakdowns in the middle with a four, a four part, just high harmony following the chords of the original. Um, he apparently had this really nice plug-in from Massive that had that really realistic guitar sound going on. I love it. I mean, it's uh, it, you know not crazy complicated, although the, the barbershop intro was definitely something you might not expect in this piece. Um, but the, the creativity throughout the rest really came from his choice on where to sing the solo line. Did he want to sing it in his low bass range? Did he want to sing in the middle? Did he want to sing up top? Did he want to jump from one of the next. Um, he really covered all the bases there. And not only that, but it was fun. The video looks great. He looks great. It's just a very polished product. And I remember seeing this for the first time and it was his first solo doing it like this. And I was like, this is, this is a good, this is a good move for Jeff. You know, he gets a lot of attention and love and voice play always has, but, but I think Jeff going off and doing voice play, content in addition to his own solo content has been a, has been a brilliant career move and it's been awesome to see and watch him develop and get more and more creative and get more and more into the costuming and the production side of things in addition to remaining a strong singer and a and a really creative arranger so hats off to jeff this was fun i knew this was going to be fun bare necessities jungle book all the good things disney you can't go wrong it's tough to go wrong. And he went right. He went all the way right. Jeff, you're the best. Guys, thanks for stopping by and watching. Again, if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me living in my studio in Philly, in need of money at all times, consider donating to my Patreon. As little as $1 a month, you get early access, behind the scenes access, merchandise, interactions with me, all the good things. You could reach out to the patrons in the name list below or in the comment section, ask them what they think about it. And uh, that's that. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.